with me from remembering to uh, remind you of Brenda to <coughs> your presence, her and Emma. Emma is having a rough time right now. She's having to get glasses. And um, she is struggling with um, having to go to Texas, and she just has a lot of transition with her family. And so she asked that we remember Emma and Dana today. So thank you so much. And let us let's see. And Lindsay and the entire Perez crew. Thank you. Well, let us worship God. Please stand for our first thing. Please stand and turn to number two for Ain't No Rock. <laughs> a while since we've had the full component so thanks to everybody our musicians are all volunteers um, and we are grateful for all of you for being here did I get my head all the way around oh, oh he's gone so <laughs> you too thanks uh, Psalm 24 if you have your Bibles you'll find Psalms right in the middle even if you don't find have your Bibles you will still find it right in the middle um, and if you have your app, just scroll down to Psalm 24, the Psalm of David. Hear the word of God. The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it, the world and those who live in it. For he has founded it on the seas and established it on the rivers. 
who shall ascend the hill of the Lord and who shall stand in his holy place? Those who have clean hands and pure hearts who do not lift up their souls to what is false and do not swear deceitfully. They will receive blessing from the Lord and vindication from the God of their salvation. Such is the company of those who seek him, who seek the face of God, the God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, O gate, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, and the king of glory may come in. Who is the king of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the king of glory may come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the king of glory. Selah. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Now, this may be the first time I've noticed, lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors. Throw yourselves open. Let the people come in. I think that is just a wonderful way to begin our worship today. Uh, Jerry once said and has said, I'm sure many times, that we started Ecclesia so we could open our doors wider. And what a blessing it is to throw open those doors for the heads of our gates to be lifted up. We come now to our time of prayers of the people. We have mentioned a few prayer requests this morning during our announcement section, and so let's remember those. But also, let's remember what is happening in the world. Um, was it Karl Barth who said you should preach with a newspaper in one hand? Is that right? Yeah, that's Barth. Barth. Uh, a newspaper in one hand and the Bible in the other. So it is important that we remain connected to what is happening in the world. I have been so distraught by um, the collapse of the apartment complex or condos in Florida and just reminded again how dangerous greed and um, I guess neglect can be. As the death toll rises, let's remember those families who still don't have answers but know the answer anyway for those who remain um, missing. Let's pray for those who are trying to seek answers for the, to avoid this problem in the future. And let's, as we pray for, for this situation, let's also ask God to show us any greed that is in our own hearts to reveal to us any way in which we are a part of the problem. Let's ask God to root that out in us so that we can make that change in ourselves and begin to be part of the solution. We also want to pray for those um, states where COVID is still on the rise. Um, there are many here in the U.S. who are suffering thusly. A uh, few with as dire a situation, as I mentioned earlier, as the island of Cuba, which is just being hammered by, if not the weather, uh, the virus. And so we remember them. And, you know, we bring Cuba to your minds each week because we are so closely connected to them through our own um, travels there, through um, our connection to our sister church, through Stan and Kim. We also want to remember other nations where our brothers and sisters in Christ and, and God's, all of God's children reside. Let's try to take our eyes off of just our local surroundings and look beyond that. Let's look beyond our own neighborhoods. Let's look beyond, let's, let's see our neighborhood though. Let's, let's don't overlook that, but let's just keep reaching, asking God to give us the eyes of God, that we could see the needs of others all around us and throughout the world. So as we begin our prayer together today, we'll begin with a moment of silence in which I ask you to um, bring your hearts and minds into this space, asking God to clear your mind and bring you present here. 
Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for the opportunity to come into worship this morning. We thank you for clearing our hearts and minds of those things which would distract us from being here. Help us to be fully present and to remember that this time is not ours, but it is an offering we give to you that it is not just the readers, the speakers, the musicians, the singers who bring you an offering of praise, but it is each of us here. It is our time to give back to you the praise and the glory and the honor you so richly deserve. We confess, O oh God, that we hold too tightly to our distractions, deceived by the idea that if we think about it a little bit more, we'll be able to fix it. Help us to let go of that deception and to believe the truth that you have created in us all that we need to be who you have called us to be from the beginning of time, you created us, you chose us, each and every one of us, to the praise of your glory. So let us put aside the distractions. Remind us that that too will wait. And help us lean in to the beauty of your grace and mercy and love that binds all of us together. We lift to you, O oh God, the names of those who weigh heavy on our hearts, those who are ill, who are infirmed, who need your presence in a special way today. And as we say those names, we ask, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. David Stevens. Jermaine Weaver. Stan Hartman. Rosella Giselle. Wilbur Wise. Francisco. Um, Jane Earnhardt. Emma Jason. Lana. Kimberly and Russell. The Perez family. Andrea Johnson. Jeffrey Dooling. Nova and Mason. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now let us pray as Christ taught us to pray, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
please stand and turn to number 34. I surrender all to Jesus. <laughs> children's story. Yay! Do we need to move the mic or are we good? Okay. Okay. Here's our bag from Matanzas. It matches my stove. I mean, okay, it doesn't really match, but it sort of, it doesn't match, but kind of, in a way. Not at all, but sort of. They came from the same They came from Thank You Kim. They came from the same place. I knew there was something. Okay. Who wants to reach in and get the book? Not everybody. Somebody. All right. Thank you, Gabby. You want to tell them the name of it? The Invisible String. The Invisible String. And this is a weird thing about this is I can see that Invisible String in here right now. 
Um, yes, if anyone would like to move over here to see the pictures, you are free to do so. I, I know, I can see, I can see the little stirrings of people going, I really want to see the pictures. Okay, so this book is by Patricia Karst, who wrote this book because it was a story. She was a single mom, and she was telling a story to her son because every day when she had to leave him to go to work, he was very, very sad. And so she told him this story, and then she began telling it to other children. That's how it became a picture book that is illustrated by Joanne, Ju not Joanne, that's someone else entirely, Joanne, <laughs> Joanne Lou, whose last name starts with a V. All right, The Invisible String by Patricia Karst. Liza and Jeremy, the twins, were asleep. One calm and quiet night. Suddenly, it became to, began to rain very hard. Thunder rumbled until it got so loud that it woke them up. Mommy, mommy, they cried out as they ran to her. Don't worry, you two. It's just the storm making all that noise. Go back to bed. We want to stay close to you said Jeremy. We're scared. Mom said, you know, we're always together, no matter what. But how can you, we be together when you're out here and we're in bed, said Liza. Mom held something right in front of them and said, this is how. Rubbing their sleepy eyes, the twins came closer to see what Mom was holding. I was about your age when my mommy first told me about the invisible stream. I don't see a stream, said Jeremy. You don't need to see the invisible stream. People who love each other are always connected by a very special stream made of love. But if you can't see it, how do you know it's there? Asked Liza. Even though we can't see it with our eyes, you can feel it with your heart and know that you are always connected to everyone you love. When you're at school and you miss me, your love travels all the way along the string until I feel it tug on my heart. And when you tug it right back, we feel it in our hearts, said Jeremy. Does Jasper the cat have an invisible stream? Liza asked. She sure does, said Mom. And best friends like me and Lucy, asked Liza. Best friends too. How far can the string reach? Anywhere and everywhere, Mom said. Would it reach me even if I were a submarine captain deep in the ocean? Asked Jeremy. Yes, Mom said, even there. Or a mountain climber? Even there. A dancer in France, asked Jeremy. Even there. A jungle explorer. Even there. Well, what about an astronaut out in space? Yes, even there. Then Jeremy quietly asked, can my string reach all the way to Uncle Brian in heaven? Yes, even there. Well, does the string go away when you're mad at us? <laughs> Never, said Mom. Love is stronger than anger, and as long as love is in your heart, the string will always be there. Even when you get older and can't agree about things like what movies to see or what games to play in the back seat or what time to go to bed. Oh, that's right. You two should be in bed. Yeah. And with that, 
They all laughed as mom chased the twins back to their beds. Within a few moments, they were asleep, even though the storm was still making the same noises outside. As they slept, they started dreaming of all the invisible strings they have and all the strings that their friends have and their friends have and their friends have until everyone in the world was connected by invisible strings and from deep inside they could now clearly see that no one is ever alone. The end. Did y'all see the string in the story? Well, no, because it's an invisible string. Of course not. But you should be able, and if you pay a really good attention, I bet you'll start to notice that you can feel that string holding you close, especially when you think to yourself, you know what? I just made a big mistake, and I don't know if God's still going to love me. Then God's going to go chug, chug, chug. I do too love you. And you go, oh yeah, that's right. That's the invisible string holding you close and reminding you that no matter what, you are always, always, always loved. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for the strings of love that hold us together. And we thank you for Jesus, who was the best giver of the invisible string ever. It's in his name we pray. Amen. Thanks, guys. Our scripture reading today comes from the letter to the Ephesians. Chapter 1, verse 3 through 14. So let's be sure that everybody knows where Ephesians is because we're going to be here for a while. And um, Jay, do we need to move the microphone? Um, so Ephesians is in the New Testament, which is more than halfway towards the end of your Bible. So if you open your Bible from the back side and flip over, I don't know, about that much. Well, it depends on your Bible, but not a whole lot. If you get to the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you've gone too far. So the way I remember where Ephesians is, is um, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, and then Central Electric Power Company right? General, thank you. General electric power. First and second Corinthians, Galatians starts with a G, Ephesians starts with an E, Philippians and Colossians PC. So G-E-P-C is the way I remember that. Um, Ephesians chapter one. We're going to be reading verses three through 14. Chapter one. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He has destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us through the beloved. In him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time to gather up all things to him, things in heaven and things on earth. 
in Christ, we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we who were the first to set our hope on Christ might live for the praise of his glory. In him, you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption as God's own people to the praise of his glory. The word of God for the people of God. I asked Baker to sing for us this morning um, one of my favorite hymns, uh, When Morning Gills the Skies. I hope you enjoy it. Baker? So for this hymn, each verse ends with the line, um, May Jesus Christ be praised. And so each time that comes up at the very end of the verse, we're going to sing that together. So let's do that part together right now. May Jesus Christ be praised. There is no 
question that Judy Wolf loves all of her grandchildren. She doesn't have a favorite. She doesn't. I mean, really, uh, her all three of them are her beloved blessings. The first two boys are the biological sons of her only daughter. What possibly could she need in addition to that? Nothing. She didn't need a granddaughter adopted into the family from a Russian orphanage. But when the idea of Anna Kate Willis began to take shape, well, Judy started loving her before she was born. We all did. And so it was that this little girl, chosen by her parents, was chosen by her grandmother and her family. Anna Kate was chosen for love. She didn't do one thing to deserve it either. She just got chosen in that random way that adoptions happen. Her name happened to come up. Her profile, her folder happened to reach the top of the stack at the same time that the Willis family name happened to reach the top of that stack. It was all random, but still, from the moment Anna Kate entered the Willis family, she was completely a beloved. And she knows it, too, let me tell you. I have delightful memories of little Anna Kate boldly going up to request a cup of water at Carowinds at six years old. Now, that's not that extraordinary, except when you realize she didn't learn to walk until she was three. She has cerebral palsy. And so when she walked to get the cup of, of water, it was a long walk, though it was only a few feet. And by the time she got back, the water cup was almost empty from spilling it, so she just went back and got another one. This beloved, young, confident woman is 19 and a college sophomore, rising college sophomore now. And every time you're around her, you can tell this woman knows that she is beloved. A half a dozen surgeries and cerebral palsy did nothing to dampen her confidence in knowing that she is beloved. I love to be around people like that, don't you? We have a brand new baby niece named Thea, who is arguably the cutest one-year-old and in in the one-year, three-month-year-old in the world. Well, it's not really arguable, definitive, as it were. And when she comes, when she is brought onto the porch to the awaiting family, she beams because she knows, oh boy, I'm beloved. It's the look you see on Mason's face every time he walks in this church. He's just like, well, come on and hug me because you all love me to pieces. He knows he is beloved. Wouldn't it be great? If we all walked around in life with that kind of confidence in our belovedness. The thing is, Anna Kate is completely confident that she was chosen, that she is blessed, that she is beloved. But if you ask her grandmother, Judy, or any of the rest of us who know her, we'll tell you it's we who are blessed. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. Starting today for the next seven weeks, we're going to be in the book of Ephesians. The Ephesians were from Ephesus. I was probably in seminary when I realized that. But Ephesus 
is the town where Ephesians come from, just like North Carolina is the state that North Carolinians come from. So Ephesus is a Greek city across the Mediterranean Sea from Jerusalem. And Paul, the Apostle Paul, went there and um, lived there. He didn't just visit there. He lived there for a year or two as well. And while he was there, he established a church. And that church grew and um, was made up of what we would call Gentiles. Now, Gentiles are people who did not first come to know Christ through the Jewish faith. Uh, uh, the earliest believers recognized Christ as the Messiah and converted, uh, I'm not even sure you would call it converted, but became Christ's followers. But later, as the word spread, as the gospel spread, people um, who were not originally Jewish came to know Christ. And all of those non-Jews who came to know Christ were called Gentiles. And so it was important for Paul that these people who were not born into the faith, so to speak, knew that they too were chosen. It was important that these people in this area far away from Jerusalem knew that God had not just chosen the Jews. No, God had chosen them too. And so he writes this letter to them and other letters to them. And we're not sure Paul wrote this letter. We've talked about this before at Ecclesia that um, it was an ancient tradition that if you are writing in the style of your teacher, rather than take credit for that yourself, you would give honor to your teacher and name them as the author because you had gained so much from them that you named them as the author. And so it could have been one of those students who wrote Ephesians. We don't really know. What we do know is God has used this text for 2000 years to help us come to know God better. And so as we look at Ephesians, we look at what Paul was trying to do um, to those people. So the thing about Paul, though, is that he's very hard to understand. And so if you were paying close attention when I was reading the text, you probably went, I should pay closer attention because I don't know what that said, because that's the way Paul talks. Let's take a look at that verse, uh, verses just, uh, let's see, five and six. Nope, three and four, five and six, something, listen up. Um, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. That's one sentence. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glory, his grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. It's kind of confusing, right? And so let's take, let's break it down a little bit. I took verses five and six and I pulled out all of the pronouns and I replaced them with proper names. And then I went back and simplified all the words. And here's what I came up with, just five and six. God planned for us to be God's children with Jesus's help because having us as children makes God happy. It's what God wants. And adopting us just shows off God's grace. Even though God already did that, showing off God's grace, I mean, when God gave humanity Jesus. Do you ever struggle to believe that you are beloved? Do you ever think that maybe God slipped up and included everybody else but left you out? And that God really loves everybody else. You believe that with your whole being. But when it comes to you, you're not so sure because you know you. And you know there are parts of you that maybe aren't so lovable. So maybe you think God doesn't quite get that. And that if God really got it, he would know that you aren't really lovable. And so you just help God out by go ahead and treating yourself like you're not lovable to start with. Well, this text says you can stop that right now. 
This text says, get over it because you too are beloved. It says that God loved you from before the foundation of the world. And that's just all there is to that. He goes on to say in the next couple of verses some things that are equally confusing. So I'll turn to the message, which is a great translation. If you ever want to just um, have everything really simplified for you, I use the message. It's not the most scholarly translation, but it's very helpful, much like the Living Bible. The message translation says in 7 to 10, because of the sacrifice of the Messiah, Jesus, God's blood, Jesus' blood, poured out on the altar of the cross. We're a free people. That means we're free of shame. That means we're free of guilt. We're a free people, free of penalties and punishments chalked up by all our misdeeds. And not just barely free either, the text says, abundantly free. He thought of everything, provided for everything we could possibly need, letting us in on the plans he took such delight in making. He set it all out before us in Christ, a long-range plan in which everything would be brought together and, and summed up in him, everything in deepest heaven, everything on planet Earth. And it goes on to say, that here's what God created us for. God created us for the praise of God's glory in Christ. Now, I don't know about you, but I've spent a lot of time in my life trying to figure out what God's will is. Anybody else? When it comes to work, relationships, parenting, uh, career choices, whatever, I want to follow God's will, but I get worried that maybe I'm just following my will and maybe maybe I just I, I want it really bad and so I'm telling myself it's God's will and so that's probably what it is and it's not really God anybody else or am I the only one that gets caught into that loop of I don't know what God's will is well you should google it because that'll help um, if you google it you'll find 33 million hits about finding God's will. There are books, there are articles, there are videos, there are television programs. You can find out what God's will is by taking, just go through all those 31 million hits and you're good to go. Or you can take a look at what the text says here. And that says that, if you want to do God's will, you were created to glorify God. And if you want to know how to do that, look at Jesus. Doesn't that simplify it? If you want to do God's will, then glorify God. Whether you're working as a dishwasher or a CEO, glorify God. That's God's will. I don't care where you work. Work wherever you want. But just do God's will while you're there. Glorify God in the space that you're in, wherever that is. God says, whoever you're going to marry, whoever you're going to be in relationship with, make that something that glorifies God. Whoever your friends are, let those relationships glorify God. How do you do that? You look at Jesus. How do we look at Jesus? We look at the Gospels. And so let's just take a look at what we can find in the Gospels. I recommend, if you want to know what Jesus said, look at Luke. It's the easiest Gospel to read. It reads really fast. It reads like a story. You can read it in a couple of days. Um, so read Luke. You'll see. And this is what you'll find in Luke. You'll find that when Jesus begins his earthly ministry, very quickly, he surrounds himself with godly friends he can trust. Jesus creates community with his 12 disciples. Jesus needed community. You too need community. It is not okay to live this life alone. It's okay to live alone. It's not okay to live your life alone. We are created for community. Surround yourself with godly people. Those godly people will help you make the kind of choices that glorify God. And together, you will glorify God. 
And then Jesus also um, interacts with people who aren't that, um, shall we say, uh, they're not polite societies. Society. He goes to the edges. He hangs out with people who have some pretty nasty diseases. He hangs out with people who don't have any money. He hangs out with people who are just plain irritating. People who interrupt him every time he tries to say anything. People who are dirty and people who always forget what time they were supposed to be somewhere. He hangs out with people who are on the outskirts of life, people that nobody else wants to be with. That's where Jesus goes. If you want to glorify God, find a way to be around people other people don't want to be around. Visit the sick, even when it's gross. Spend time with people who don't have adequate housing, who don't have access to uh, affordable health care. Spend time with people who are, have insecurity when it comes to food. Spend time with people who society says don't belong. And you'll glorify God. You'll be doing God's will just like that. Jesus establishes this sort of traveling church, and Jesus always makes it a priority to worship. So right now, wherever you are, whether you're watching online, watching on YouTube, here in this space, you're doing God's will. Everybody take a deep breath. Doesn't that feel great? You're doing God's will right now. You're glorifying God by being in worship just like Jesus did. God tells us through Paul in this text that all scripture is a testimony to God's love for us. As we look at Jesus and we look at Luke, be reminded that the entire text is a testimony to God's love for us. It also shows us we can be some real stinkers, but God loves us anyway. It shows us we can do some profoundly dumb things, but God loves us anyway. All scripture speaks to this love that God has to us. And this particular text today tells us that we are if we are loved this much, then people ought to be able to know it. People ought to be able to tell when they look at us that we are beloved by God and we know it. Because being beloved like that changes you. When you know that you know that you know that you are beloved, you are different than you would have been otherwise. Think about how earthly love changes us. How much more so then does divine love change us? I mean, we could list the big names. We could list people like Oscar Romero, who hung out with the poor in El Salvador. And when the poor looked at him, they went, oh, that's what God's love looks like. We, we could mention Shane Claiborne and Jonathan Wilson Hartgrove, uh, these sort of modern monastics who have created communities among the poor in um, Philadelphia and in Durham, North Carolina, um, respectively. We could mention other people who have sacrificed so much. We could even go way back in time to St. Therese, who was born in the 1800s, lived just 24 years most of those as a nun because she pushed them to break the rule and let her in early. She lived her whole life trying to glorify God and she summed up her beliefs about glorifying God with this phrase, do small things with great love. And so what she tells us then is, yeah, it's Oscar Romero, it's Shane Claiborne, it's, uh, you know, it's Stan and Kim. It's, it's, it's the people who move to other places and make a huge difference. But it's also the breakfast you serve at the VRQ. It's the lunch you serve up at the Transformation Village. But it's not just that. It's also the note you write, the hug you give, the smile you share, the greeting you give, the song you sing the visit you make, the time you give, all of those things done with great love 
creates a picture of belovedness that other people can see. And just like that, you're doing God's will. Just like that, you are living to the praise of God's glory. Because you are chosen for love, you act differently, you live to the praise of God's glory, and all people see that and celebrate. The love of God is for you, specifically, particularly you, and also you, and you, and you, and you too. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for the infinite, ongoing, matchless nature of your love. And we ask that it would be magnified in us, that others would see it, that others would know it. And when they look at us, they see the confidence that we have in knowing that we have been chosen by a God of love for the praise of your glory. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You've heard the word of God read. You've sung the word of God. You've prayed the word of God. And you've heard the word of God proclaimed. And now what's left is for you to respond in whatever way God is calling you to do so. Feel free to stand, turn to number five, continue to reflect on God's grace. <laughs>
Thank you all for being here. Thank you to our musicians. It's great to hear all of you today. Um, we do have several online, so I invite you to walk by the camera um, after we finish and say hello to those online. Dorcas is with us today. Dorcas has been busy. Um, she and I have been working together on getting some grants to help us with several of our <coughs> projects projects and she's found it, finding out more she ever wanted to know about Buncombe County, North Carolina. Um, and so she is with us, but my parents are with us today. They're homesick and so they joined us today. Uh, they say they're sick. I, it could have something to do with their grandson singing. I don't know. But uh, anyway, they're on and um, so is Jerry Dotson and he is on today with us from the hospital room with Sandra and so we want to offer you, Jerry and Sandra, a very special welcome and remind you that you are in our prayers so church as you go from this place remember before the creation of the world you are loved and there is nothing you can do about it thanks for worshiping with us we have bible study on tuesday i hope you'll join us at 5 30 for dinner and followed by conversation and we'll see you then thanks for being here Thank <laughs> you.